it's the next level. What is it? Don't get too close. Yeah, no shit. Looks like some sort of temporal anomaly. Either that or a miniature black hole, one of the two. It's a pretty big difference there, Paul Bunyan. Out of the way! What are you... What is that gonna do? I don't know. You have a better idea? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Everyone get behind me! Yeah! Get behind us! Come on! Does anyone else see little number five, or is that just me? Shit. What's the date? The exact date. The 24th. Of what? March. Good. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And on this episode, we are going to review and discuss season one of the Umbrella Academy. You know, basically initial thoughts of the whole season, and then we're going to go into season two, episode one. We will be doing season two one episode a week from now on. Maybe change it up. We're not sure yet, but we will all notify you through Facebook or before with the next episode if we're going to do two episodes at a time. It's just depending on how things go so please if you do send feedback treat it like maybe it's an episodic show that is how steve and i are pretty much watching at this point we're trying to do it one episode at a time like one per week like if it was actually on tv <laughs> but uh what were your thoughts on season one steve oh i love season. you know i i watched i initially watched it when uh, when our our friends on strange indeed covered it a couple years ago uh, or whenever it was 20 whenever it was and uh, i really really enjoyed it and you know the main thing for me is that i i didn't pick up on that vanya had powers early on like this watch through i kind of saw where there are little things that should have like clued me in that she that there was something more going on with her but for some reason i remember that initial watch it caught me completely off guard when the first time when we see kind of power emanate off her when she's doing that solo or doing that that first chair recital kind of thing yeah well this was my first watch of the show and i heard about the comic way back when but i never grew any interest in it i don't know why maybe it's because it was at, at a time when i wasn't really looking for something like that but from what i heard of it it was really good it just gave me the vibes of the X-Men at times because the way the kids are brought together but in this case they're adopted and stuff but with how Hargreaves was someone who was taking advantage of these kids it seemed to me you know it's that's when he brought these children together in the beginning I was a, a little bit of skeptical about Vanya not having powers and once I you know Leonard Peabody or Harold Jenkins came into play and I saw how he was like oh, wait there's something going on here she has to have something something's missing mm -hmm. as soon as that character was played in I'm like yeah that's a catalyst for something and there's got to be some sort of hidden agenda and then basically you know he'll create the time bomb which is Vanya but I, I kind of got this around episode four I believe yeah yeah I can see that I like I said on this rewatch I, I suddenly realized that oh I, I should have picked up on the fact that there was something, there was something more going on with her than uh, than meet, meet, you know, kind of meets the eye, kind of thing, because they just kept <laughs> stressing how ordinary she was, and that's that was the one thing that caught me this watch that I was like, okay, I, I really should have figured that out early on, because they just kept stressing, oh, you're ordinary, you're ordinary, you're ordinary, and I'm like, there, that's that. There's got this watch. I was like, okay, now I see. I should have picked up on that. Yeah, I actually enjoyed the show. It took me about two episodes in to really get really engrossed into it. The first episode was very long, in my opinion. I don't know. It wasn't long time-wise. 
it just felt like a long time to get to somewhere and then by third or fourth one i was i was like all right i'm into this this looks really cool yeah yeah very cool so we should get on to our top fives absolutely can we go home now so you want to go first yeah i'll go first it's really runs throughout the whole the whole season is just the different songs and the, the, the kind of different dancing scenes that they have. I really, I really liked and, and I'll highlight the, the two biggest ones for me, which are probably most people's is that first episode or first, or, I guess it's first or second episode. I guess. Yeah. We're that with Tiffany's, uh, you know, I think we're alone now and we get that wide shot of the whole house. It's almost like a comic book panel and you can see all of them dancing uh, separately in their rooms. And then of course that dancing in the moonlight scene, with with Luther and Allison is great. The ending, the, that fight scene in the diner with the Istanbul song going, just all of them. I mean, I could go on and on for this. Uh, and I loved, I didn't realize it until this watch through and I had to check the IMDb that uh, <laughs> uh, when Mary yeah, J. Blige, her. yeah, when she blows up the diner, that's her cover <laughs> of Rod Stewart's uh, Stay With Me. So I thought that was kind of a cool little touch for them to put that in. Yeah, the fact that Mary J. Blige is in there and then they actually had <laughs> yeah yeah exactly Stay with me in it during her scene yeah yeah <laughs> that's i i enjoyed that too once i realized like that's mary g blige <laughs> <laughs> took me a little while to figure it out I, I had a look just like you did as i was watching i was like she looks familiar mm -hmm. but my number five would be you know like you the music and the feel within the show mm -hmm. how they captivate you and utilize that within the scenes they all worked you know, the Queen song really got me with, mm -hmm. you know, Don't Stop Me Now. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminiscent to uh, with Shaun of the Dead and how they use that in the film, too. But, you know, definitely music is a big thing within the show for particular scenes, moods, and basically characters that are going through things. So kind of a feeling. So, you know, keep in mind, listeners, just like just pay attention to music as it's going to because you'll get a good feel of what the character's going through. I think it's a representation of mood. So Exactly, exactly, yeah. My number four was uh, just Klaus. I had totally forgotten about his character arc and how he goes from kind of being this you know, happy-go-lucky kind of just making fun of every, everything and, and being almost the comedic, you know, fallout guy to this arc when he meets Dave and how he comes back from war with his PTSD. So I, I really enjoyed watching that because I had totally forgotten about it. And it was, uh, that's just kind of a short one, but that's, uh, that really stood out to me was how the actor plays that character and how we see that, that kind of switch from early on in the season to late in the season. Oh, also including Ben, who's always there that nobody else mm -hmm. sees because he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's I, always seeing him there, and he's always there all the time. Yeah, it's really cool that that's one of those things that I, I found it interesting that they kept pointing out the fact that he couldn't manifest anybody else until he was sober, but he was able to always manifest Ben, you mm -hmm. know, and I guess that's just because the relationship being siblings and all. But uh, but still, that, that was that was really cool. There was a I'll, I'll mention this briefly because because we're talking about it. There was a somebody put in, in the IMDb goofs that when we see Ben's shadow, there's an episode where they're I think it was the day that wasn't when they're walking out of the or no the, the day that was when they're walking out of the club that you can see Ben's shadow and they said that was a goof because he's a ghost he shouldn't cast a shadow and mm. I kind of thought well no maybe that was pun intended here foreshadowing of the fact that <laughs> <laughs> that klaus can actually manifest him in physical form you know mm. so then he maybe he does cast a shadow sometimes when klaus is manifesting him so just a thought that's cool yeah but that's a cool thought <laughs> yeah my number four would be the dynamic of the group of the kids that were brought up by Hargreave. They're all messed up. And I, I saw pretty much a similarity between, it was like kind of like a mashup of like Haunting of Hill House, X-Men, and some other show that I, I was thinking of that th they're all kind of messed up. It's like mm -hmm. with Haunting of Hill House, you had one person that has powers, but in this one, you know, they all have powers, but they're going through these hardships, personal experiences and growth. Right. But, you know. But except for Vanya, who was pretty much drugged and suppressed throughout her life. So that was basically Hargreave suppressing everything. Hargreave knew that she, you know, that he had to suppress her power like Professor X to a dark phoenix, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And obviously we get that end result at the very at the very end of like the anger, the chaos and how 
strong she is as a, a meta or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Yeah, that's really that's a really good point to bring out. Just the whole dysfunction. I, there was that line from the handler when she's she's asking Hazel and Chacha for a uh, a re- why they couldn't fulfill their mission, and they're like, "Well, that family had us," and she's like, "You had a dysfunctional bunch of siblings, and you couldn't take care of them." I thought that was great. Yeah, um, yeah. my number three is is it's kind of a long one, but I, I want to discuss it because it really bugged me, and I went back and watched these episodes over again a couple of times. Because it, it just bugged me. There was a, a small continuity error, I think. But maybe it's not a continuity error. I don't know. But maybe, I don't know if you saw it or not. But in episode six, uh, six and seven, which is the day that wasn't and the day that, that was, which, by the way, I, I love the two episodes a lot. They're really great because we get to see, you know, the same day kind of from different perspectives. And mm-hmm. we get to see some different things. But what, what bugged me, and I'm not sure if it's a continuity error or not, is that the in the day that wasn't, we see at 8.15 a.m., uh, Luther is talking to the family and, or to the other siblings that are there. The And he's talking about what he learned from number five and the fact that number five is gone. And there is there's like a there's like a ding in the background, which we do hear in the next episode as well when when five arrives. But he has that whole conversation with them before Vanya and Leonard come to the house. In the next episode, in the day that wasn't, or the day that was, number five appears at 8.15 a.m. again, is what the, the, you know, the, the title card says, 8.15 a.m. again, mm-hmm. which means Vanya would have, would have interacted with him. But we don't get that scene. We don't... So I don't know if 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 they're trying to make it look like because five changed the day that Vanya and Leonard came earlier or something because we get that same scene where they're walking outside in the rain and it just it just bugged me a little bit because you would think that and I guess it just goes to what the the time travel aspect of the show of what five talked about the butterfly effect is that you would think that everybody's day would proceed exactly the same except for those, you know, four or five siblings. Cause the only ones, the only change was that they interacted with five instead. And it just, it just kind of bugged me a little bit when I went back and watched it. Cause it just didn't make sense that we, you know, we, we, we lose a, a lot of kind of character defining moments from the day that wasn't because we get Vanya finding the ledger, the the little uh, diary of Hargreaves in that episode. But then that scene is mirrored in episode nine when mm-hmm. she finds the book and then kills Leonard. <laughs> so it just kind of, it just, it bugged me a little bit. And I don't know if it was necessarily continuity error or not, but it just, if they'd had five appear a little bit later, like at 9am or something, instead of the same time it as was a little bit. Yeah. I, I did get that feel as a, first view mm-hmm. that something seemed a little off but i don't know it, it seemed like like for like the second time when he comes in he just blasts in and they all look at him mm-hmm. and it was kind of abrupt yeah yeah so and i think that kind of delayed the conversation at a certain point maybe but yeah could be me. the only thing i can figure is that that maybe vanya and leonard never entered the room because five appeared maybe they saw five appear out of the air and so they never actually entered the room he still uh steals hargrave's action figure or statue whatever from the little case that he steals it from which we never see that thing again i thought that was gonna be, they're gonna make it, it was under the bed oh was it under the bed okay with the where the yeah where the ledger book was right and so yes. because that whole thing changed again we don't know what happened to it in the day that was mm-hmm. so okay Okay, but anyway, I'm just, it it was a little thing and it just, it bugged me enough that it made me go back and rewatch those beginning scenes again. And because I wanted to see where she finds the book, which is she actually finds, we see her finding the book right at the very end of episode six when five appears and the day backs up. So I don't know. It just, it just was a little. I'm, I'm I'm saying it's a little thing, but we're spending a lot of time on it. So I know, uh, I know. But yeah, it just bugged me a little bit. So that'll bring me to my number two, right? Uh, your number three, I thought. Oh yeah, my number three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the kids come together at the end to help one another, as well as helping Vanya herself because they're family. Mm. But that ending was really good. <laughs> little uh, out there, <laughs> <laughs> you know. They didn't be. They didn't stop. 
the apocalypse. It just like oh, it was inevitable. Well, yeah, but, and almost in a way, you could say they almost ended up they they kind of caused it really. Oh yeah, um, yeah. In certain and because if well, we don't know what would have happened if Vanya had just played the concert. Would she have just killed the people? In the concert in, alone. In the concert, yeah. Or if they hadn't, you know, if they had done what Allison wanted, when Allison said, no, let her go, if they hadn't kept her locked up in that cell. And Things it, would have been way different, I think. Right, exactly. If Allison hadn't shot the gun next to her head, she wouldn't have been distracted and her whatever power wouldn't have shot up and to the moon, it would have shot out. You know, Correct. so it still might have destroyed, like, the city or the building or something. We don't know if it would have destroyed the whole world or not, but we know that because Vanya, because her aim changed, it went through the roof and hit the, the moon, and then we have the, the apocalypse. So it is kind of interesting. It's kind of funny. It, it, it's, it, I hate to, to joke about it like that, but it is kind of funny that they ended up causing the very thing they were trying to stop, yeah. which which yeah. they talk about in episode one <laughs> of season two. So Yeah, they, they do. And it's it's so wild, though, for the fact that it does leave off and goes right, if you think about it, goes into, but left it kind of ominous. I guess they weren't sure if they were going to do a season two. It is and it is weird that they that they ended it that way, and except, like, I, I don't know how the comic book ended. I think the comic book ends with the apocalypse happening as well. So maybe they thought, well, we're just going to end it the same way the comic book ended, whether we get a season two or not. Yeah, and they are able to make it work in my opinion yeah but yeah the it, it's so funny how it's like well i'm pretty sure everybody who's listening now has watched episode one of season <laughs> two the fact that there is another apocalypse my my question is are they going to go back to the original and try to fix that so they try to clean up everything i know it's a butterfly effect but i have a funny feeling if they go to another season and yet again there's another apocalypse <laughs> They're going to have to go back to the first one, fix that issue, and then change that. But th that's just my thought. Yeah, it's it's interesting. We'll, we'll see because we do know, and again, this is a spoiler full. We, we probably should announce this at the beginning of the, the episode. This is a spoiler full podcast for it. But uh, we do know that it has been announced that season three has been greenlit. I don't know if it's been written or they have any plans for what they're going to do with it. But we, we do know that a season three has been green lips at this point so yeah so yeah so it, it's gonna be interesting to see if they actually do stop this apocalypse or like you said if it's if this ends up being another apocalypse that they can't that they can't stop and they have to go back in time again or they go forward in time or what they're gonna do at the end of the season we don't know it's gonna be interesting uh, to see I'm, I'm excited for the for this whole season so yeah so far it looks really good yeah so my number two was just kind of the sad story of Allison and how she, how her family kind of broke up. But at the same time, it sounds like from her, as she's driving the car and she's remembering it, we see her use the power, use her rumor power on her daughter uh, to make her go to sleep. And her husband's standing in the doorway. And it's almost like she comes, she turns around and she says, no, no, uh, and she tries to explain something, but then as she's remembering, she, I think she realizes, and this is probably what her husband realized and why they broke up or why they got divorced, because the husband realizes, wait a minute, I, I don't know what has been rumored and what hasn't. And we hear all these times when she used her power on her daughter, when she used her, her power, we hear her different lines for her career. And then the very last line we hear is I heard a rumor that you love me and I wonder if that was her speaking to her husband and so now he can't even trust what's true and what's and what's not and it just it just was very tragic and, and very kind of sad the way it happened yeah it it sounded to me like she was just using her power to manipulate throughout her life absolutely and she just utilized it to get what she wanted which changes I think in season two too so well um yeah obviously we're, we're gonna we're gonna find out uh, you know we'll talk about season two uh, episode when we get to it but it is interesting that we we know that she eventually gets her voice back because we see her using it there mm. in the opening scene but then when we see what happened to her we also see that she doesn't have a voice so it's, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how how that relationship with that man 
became and whether that child is a child of hers or that was a, a child of his or, or well, I guess we'll find out in the, the next few episodes or throughout the season. Yeah. Plus with that scene with Vanya and her unleashing her power on it mm-hmm. and cutting her throat. Oh, that was so intense. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, and it was it was so again, it was one of those sad moments when you see and then later on when Vanya is is feeling repentant about it and she's looking at the bow and she sees the blood on her mm-hmm. bow and she realizes what she did and then her relief when she finds out that Allison is alive and I still wondered as I watched that scene with Vanya in the cell mm-hmm. I wonder if she could see what Allison was writing and I hope she could because I hope Same she here. Yeah. I hope she yeah. knew that Allison wanted to let her out that it was Luther but you know it might not have been the way the way the actors were kind of standing she might not have been able to see what Allison was writing and so she may not realize that Allison and the rest of the siblings wanted her to wanted Luther to let her go but Luther was the one who said no I'm going to keep her locked up and Luther was the one yeah. who kind of put the foot down so yeah he put the foot down he was the one that was he was like the number one so obviously he was trying to take control and take charge of the family the the, the one thing too about that cell scene is like she could not hear them and they could not hear her right Right. So that was that was the hardest, but it would have been great if we actually got confirmation that, you know, she was able to read whatever Allison was writing because right. obviously Allison couldn't speak. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll find out. We, we, we may or may not find out this season. Who knows? My number two would be each character from the group is pretty much that, that family's messed up. <laughs> they all know that themselves to some degree except for number five who thinks he knows better because you know he's a 58 year old man (laughs) stuck in a 13 year old's body and uh, it's just so funny how i i guess he could actually change that if he really wanted to push it that way but i guess he'd grown comfortable to be in that 13 year old body of himself yeah it was a little that that part is a little bit confusing in that we don't really know uh, you know kind of he says something about when he when he shows up and he's in the in the body of a 13 year old and they say something to him about it he goes well i messed up the calculations Mm -hmm. and so there's some sort of formula to even when he uses his own powers to time travel and so yeah it is interesting if if we'll if we ever find out kind of the explanation of that or if it's just uh you know, going to be one of those kind of hand wavy things that, you know, they just want that, you know, they, they want the, the plot. Uh, and it's, I'm sure it's probably the same in the comic books. They, they want the, the character to derive from the fact that he's, you know, the 20, whatever, 58 year old man and a 13 year olds, 14 year old body, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and you know, we also know that the act, what's, what's kind of cool about this particular uh, show is I believe the actor is an adult. And, and so he's not, he's probably not going to change much. And so mm-hmm. we won't run into that story problem of him, you know, growing, growing up and them having to explain how <laughs> why he, he's, yeah, growing. why he's doing, because I think the, I think the <laughs> actor is actually like 20 or something like that. I think, oh, wow. I could be wrong, but I think I looked that up and I don't, I'm pretty sure he's like an adult. So he just looks like a little kid or they, and they, especially the way they dress him and, and obviously do his makeup yeah. and stuff he's he's gonna look much younger than he actually is that's wild <laughs> so where are we at are we at my number one yeah i think number so. one uh it just this the season finale in general just everything that happened and we've kind of already talked a little bit about it but just the the all the stuff that goes on and that that moment when it's you don't know whether allison is gonna shoot vanya in the head or you don't know what she's actually going to do. And she ends up firing next to her head and just distracting her enough instead of killing her. And uh, so that's, it's going to be interesting to see. I loved uh, that we got to see Klaus and what he did with, with Ben. And we still don't really fully understand Ben's powers. He has somehow he, he lets, he has tentacles coming out of his body (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I think I read or one of the other podcasts I was listening to talked about the fact that what he's actually doing is he's opening up a portal like to another, yep. uh, dimension, another dimension and he's letting yeah. out some kind of creature or something to attack for him. But uh, that opens up a whole nother can if that's what's going on. But but, you know, we get to see him and we get to see what happened to those bank robbers. And we you know, he tears a guy in half. I mean, he rips him. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was all done animated too, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and it's just it's just really it was really cool to see all of them um 
fighting together and even five when he shows up and he's trying to help them out. Yeah, so. it, it seems like it, it was showing them in their prime when they were the Umbrella Academy exactly. going out there in their, you know, academy suits and stuff and stopping crime and, and all that stuff. So uh, my number one would be basically my number one is just a, a mishmash of things that I had questions for that I hope will get answers to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, w- I wish we got a little bit more about Pogo how he was created and a backstory about how he came into Hargreaves life and how Hargreaves helped him and how he helped the family and how else he was there. Uh, I, you know, and plus that the, uh, there's Ben, how did he die? And what was, you know, how is he so attached to Klaus and where that, you know, is the relationship? I'm, I'm hoping that in the coming season that we actually see a little bit more about that. You know, you get more information because they, you know, even though Pogo is there and he was gone after the first season, he was very much a part of that family. Just like the mother, you know, the robot, mm-hmm. she was there. Plus, that was also something that I got a good chuckle about. Is like Vanya went through like what three or four nannies, <laughs> at least, <laughs> and, at least, and, and, and we don't know like, how I'll, many she killed, how many were just injured. Yeah. You know, there's actually there there had to be a at least a couple that were you know killed by her so yeah yeah and that's that's what it's like Hargreaves had to like clean up those bodies Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) i also noticed that uh number one story about his transformation was different from the comic yeah because in the comic he had his head grafted onto a gorilla's body but in the show he was injected with a serum with like dna and all that of a that gave him gorilla features yeah from like the neck down yeah 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 and that's an interesting again that's one of those things that when you know when they when they bring allison in and uh pogo says that she needs a blood transfusion or she needs blood and he tries to offer his and pogo says no you can't give her your blood yeah you know? your blood is more like mine than anybody yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so uh i don't remember if they showed us who's who ended up doing the the blood transformation transfusion with her or not but uh it, it is it kind of interesting that uh yeah Klaus's was tainted mm-hmm. <laughs> polluted according to pogo uh, i forget who it was yeah it might have been was it diego I don't I, know. it sticks in my mind that it was diego uh but i don't i don't recall paying attention to that scene close enough when it when it happened yeah. so uh, <laughs> So we had a few notes here. Yeah, I think we've got some similar notes. So why don't you go with yours? Because I think uh, yours and your first one and mine are very similar. Well, my first one would be the dark humor of the show. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what drew me to it once I started getting into it. I I wish I listened to Strange Indeed when they initially covered it and started watching way back when. But I was skeptical about it then. uh, Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you suggested it, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm glad, and you know, it's besides the fact that it's really the only new content we have at the moment. But uh, I, you know, I'm I'm with you right there with the the dark humor, the kind of subtle kind of humor stuff. I, I love that uh, that closing. It's in the the episode nine or episode ten. I can't remember when they're when they're driving uh, to go to Leonard's cabin, and uh, uh, Luther says, you know, ask something about, you know, can you go faster or something like that, and Five says, ask me again, and I'll burn you with a cigarette lighter. I just yeah. thought that was one of the, I know we're not into quotes yet, but that just, I loved it, uh, and it made me chuckle every time uh, as I watched it. Just all the subtle humor, like with when we were, you were talking about the different nannies, when she throws Grace across the room, uh, the, the robot, uh, she gets up and she walks toward her and you can, it, I didn't, I don't think I realized it the first time, uh, I watched it a year or so ago, but her head was completely turned around and she's walking backwards basically. <laughs> and then she turns her own head around <laughs> so that she can, and uh, to continue the meal. And then Vanya starts to eat her, her oatmeal. Cause she realizes, Oh, this is a nanny that I can't. Uh, apparently yeah, I can't there was futility kill. at that point, and she had to actually eat her oatmeal or whatever. Yeah, for exactly. <laughs> I thought that and just just all throughout. There's all these just little moments of of humor stuff that that we don't like. The whole thing of of when they're in the bowling alley and the mother comes over and thinks that five is Klaus and uh, Diego's son, and they're like, "Do you want your son to come?" be at my 15 year old's birthday party and Klaus is like, I'd rather rip out your throat or something like that. I can't, or uh, number five is like, I can't remember exactly what he said to her, but she sent, he sends her packing. Uh, just the, all of that, just the little humorous touches. 
And uh, I hope we get that throughout season two as well. Yeah, same here. I'm just glad that the mother or the robot gave them names because the numbers really throw me off. Yeah, times. yeah, <laughs> yeah. One and three are trying to have a relationship. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The change within time, I, I really enjoyed that. The alternate timelines and what may have been and what could have been. Mm -hmm. I, I just really like the twist of things. They're they're really gonna. This is more of like a who like a time traveling kind of show. Yeah, yeah. There definitely is some time travel stuff there. Yeah, the scene where we see where Allison, where Hargreaves makes Allison use her power on mm. Banya. Uh, she said they were four years old when that when that happened, and uh, it just I, I teared up a little bit watching that scene because it was just so sad, and it made me wonder. I guess the other, either Allison had forgotten because it was so many years or maybe the other kids just didn't even realize that Vanya, and, and I guess this is evidence because we see that later when they find out that Vanya has powers, none of them can believe it. And, you know, you would think Allison would be the one, well, why dad are you telling me to tell her she's ordinary? You know, yeah. and, and they're really, she just, and I guess at being at four years old, she just didn't question it. She just used her power to tell Anya she was, uh, Vanya, she was ordinary Mm -hmm. And that was it. But it was kind of sad. Yeah, it was sad. That that was a hard scene to watch. But then, you know, you come to that realization, okay, this is how they were able to suppress it. But if she, in her mind, deep down, she knew, like, she thought she was normal because of the rumor, uh, as it is that you're, you're normal. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is were the medication meant to suppress her powers? Well, yeah, and I think that was the whole thing, was that's what, I think even, even Hargreaves realized that the rumor power might not be enough if Banya well and this is what we find out later when when Leonard starts to push her mm -hmm. that Hargreaves realized that just the rumor wasn't going to be enough to suppress her he needed to keep her uh, and I'm sure what the kind of medication she was on was like antidepressants or something like that so that it kept her to where her emotions are are even and she never really had any emotion until she stopped taking those meds so yeah my final one is uh, just that fight scene between hazel and cha-cha i thought was really great <laughs> and the whole time when agnes is on the chair over the 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 hot tub and it just it, it was just <laughs> such a great because we hadn't seen we'd seen those two fight other people we'd seen but not five each other fight, but yeah seeing them fight each other i thought was it was great it was well choreographed i think the stuntmen did did a really good job and uh, it did, I think they did really well to find stuntmen that were close to the the characters, to at least in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have one quote. I don't know. Do you have any? Or I didn't. I didn't have any quotes. I didn't really. I, I think I already used my one. The the <laughs> burning with a cigarette lighter thing. Well, yeah, I only have one, and that would be Klaus saying, "There's nothing like a little strangling to get the blood flowing," <laughs> and that was to Diego as he was getting him tied up to be sober, all because Diego is pissed at them. <laughs> I I thought that was that it was funny too when when Cha Cha and Hazel are tying him up, and and you see his kind of reaction. Action and Hazel Cha-Cha uh, looks down and she sees him, uh, you know, getting uh, getting aroused by the, the <laughs> strangling and the torture. And she's like, ew, you know, that exactly. Was, that was that was great. Yeah, there was a lot of great lines. I just uh, I, I failed to write any of them down. Hmm. Well, we have the next episode, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> episode one of season two, which we're going to go into. So next up is the Umbrella Academy season two, episode one. Right back where we started, and it's pretty much exactly what it is. Uh, the synopsis is, after dropping his siblings into an alley in Dallas in different years, five scrambles to track them all down and stop a new doomsday threat, which... You know, basically, here yeah. I'm going to throw you into the same yeah. thing again. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was great, and we we do want to take a moment here, just in case. I can't. I don't know why you would be listening to us if you haven't already watched episode one. You've probably binged watched the entire season at this point. But uh, just just a warning to you: if you have not watched episode one of season two of the Umbrella Academy yet, stop now, go watch <laughs> it, and come back to come back. Yeah, uh, I started last time. Do you want to go? And I noticed I just I swapped our colors on the on the agenda, didn't I? Um, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll I'll start. Yeah. So, so onto our top fives, and I'll go first sure. this time. Can we go home now? 
My number five would be Vanya finds herself with a family that takes her in as a nanny, and then she gets to find herself in some respect, you know, finds a family, people that she can connect with, you know, and, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool for the fact that, you know, she had a messed up life with her own family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah. this at this time, you know, she has amnesia and she doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, it's it's really pretty cool, and I think I had it in my notes about this that uh, I'm a little skeptical of the whole amnesia thing. I think that's in my notes. You, you know, think she's it, play, you know playing it I, off? I mean, part of me thinks it's it because it doesn't. It just it just it's too easy for her to have amnesia and with everything her character went through there at the end of this, of the, the season of that arc of having a repentant thought and then getting angry again because they locked her up. Mm -hmm. I want to see her work through that. I don't want to see her. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to give her a pass on what she, <laughs> you know, what she was about to do. And, uh, but we'll see, we'll see if the, if the amnesia is real and then how they deal with that throughout the, the season. So, yeah. Uh, my number five was just the, the kind of there's some homages to other sci-fi shows and time travel kind of stories. I, uh, I, I It's not as clear the second time I watched this or third time I watched the episode through. But when Vanya gets hit by the car, it's very similar to mm -hmm. to Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future getting hit with the car. Um, and then uh, when Hazel pops in to help number five and I it they reverse the line, but it's very similar to the one from the Terminator franchise. He says, if you want to live, come with me. So they kind of reverse mm. it in the Terminator franchise. It's come with me if you want to live. If you want to live. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, I de there's definitely some homages there when uh, five is in the apartment uh, with the, the guy, uh, Elliot. He says the truth is out there, which is X-Files reference. So I really <laughs> loved uh, all these these subtle little sci-fi uh, kind of references that they gave us. Yeah, I noticed that too. At, 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 and it was funny too. It was on my first watch. I'm like, that looks familiar. That's like, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, you know, they, they. I think they're just clued into that whole thing of, you know, mm -hmm. pop culture. And, I, and they're trying to hit those points when they, when they do the show. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So what uh, was my your number four? Uh, you're number five for this one. Or no, did you, you started first. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. You're number four. Yes. All right. My uh, number four would be, uh, Luther making himself useful with <laughs> the time as a boxer for a thug, pretty much, uh, somebody who, who was it? Wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald, was it? I think Did it's, it... I think it's supposed to be, um, uh, Jack Ruby. The, yeah, it was Jack the, Ruby yeah, who the, killed, who kills Lee Harvey Oswald in the original. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah I think that's who we're meant to, I don't think they, I think they've said Ruby, um, I think there was a couple of characters that I, that identified him as Ruby. So I think that's what we're meant to think is that he's, he's Jack Ruby from that, from that. He Dallas is. Area. Yeah. As I recall, because five actually brings it up because five points it out to Luther when he, when he talks to him in the club. And I just like the idea of the fact that he's just trying to survive within the world that he was mm -hmm. dropped in. Now, mind you, each of them were dropped literally at different times within years apart. Like, yeah, what? I've got this, I've got this in my number four. I've got all the specific, Okay, so if you want to go ahead with that, um, that would be great. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, and, and I totally agree with you. I want to, and I had this later, I think I sent this as a voicemail actually to somebody, that I'm really, I'm interested to see that story, that backstory with Luther of how he ended up being Jack Ruby's kind of bodyguard slash boxer. And you know, that's a callback to season one, because when he went to Diego's gym, Mm -hmm. the the guy in the ring is like hey because, you ever, yeah you should get in the ring yeah if you yeah. ever want a box come see me so okay so here's the different dates that they all arrived uh klaus and ben uh show up uh on or around february 12th 1960 we don't get that on screen we just get 1960 on screen uh, mm -hmm. for them but then they find the magazine that's dated february 12th so sometime around february 12th 1960 is when klaus and ben get there uh, Allison, we just get 1961 and she goes into that diner with the, the whites only sign. And it just was, a, that's kind of a sad reminder that we have not gotten, uh, we have not gone very far in the last 40 years as we think we have Luther. They just tell us 1962 and I loved him crying out <laughs> for, uh, for Allison there in the alleyway. And then the first time we actually get an on screen date is with Diego, who shows up on September 1st, 
1963. And I absolutely love that he's the only one that does the hero landing. Like he he totally knew and expected what was about to happen. And that's completely what his power is, you know, is that he's got the agility and stuff. So that was really Mm -hmm. cool. Vanya is October 12th, 1963. And uh, she's still dressed in that white suit that, you know, her, she was in a black suit with a black tie, but then her, I guess her powers or something changed the suit to white as she was playing the music. Mm -hmm. Um, And then five is November 25th, 1963, which I think is interesting because it's three days after the Kennedy assassination. So I I wonder if, if him going back to 10 days earlier than November 25th, if we're going to see, you know, kind of how the events get to that point. Uh, But just a bit of trivia. I, I love that he's still in his bowling shoes and yeah. uh, uh, and again, <laughs> a, a bit of trivia about the the the, the November twenty second, nineteen sixty three, when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. It's also the same day that C. S. Lewis died, who mm-hmm. was a a prolific Christian author at the time, and uh, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. For those of you that that may not know, and then also November twenty second, nineteen sixty three, is the day that Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World, died. So just kind of yeah. an interesting. It's a it's an interesting date in in history. Oh, definitely. Very iconic, too, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Right, right. Well, and this, you know, th- th- we get the callback. There's a little bit of a callback also to season one again, because remember, it was the day that, that Kennedy was assassinated, that number five time travel forward to 2019. So mm. it, um, he was there. We, we don't know if he was there to prevent the assassination, if he was there to because he was he ends up, you know, he was the guy on the grassy knoll is mm-hmm. what we find out. But he never actually fires his gun. So we don't know exactly what his mission was. I don't think they ever really tell us, or they, in season one at least, they didn't tell us exactly what his mission was there in 1963. So uh, it'll be interesting to see hmm. also if we, if we, if they run he into encounters which, himself, maybe. Yeah, exactly. If he, if he encounters the older <laughs> version of himself, that would be interesting to see. So you're number three, I think. That would be number five, dealing with everything and trying to get the family together. He still wants to fix things. Apparently, there's there's new a new order looking for him and the family, and then unfortunately Hazel lost his wife to cancer. That was one that was it was hard to to deal with, you know. They did get twenty years together though, which is which is really nice. He he makes that he says that to, yeah to five. Yeah. He says that yeah hey, Agnes died of of cancer, but we did have twenty years together. We don't know how how long before this event. That she's died. So we don't know how long he's been waiting to mm. come there to save five, but he does make that mention. He says, I'm keeping a promise to Agnes. So I, I wonder that another, uh, that's a story. I wonder if we're going to get that story of them or if we're just going to be left kind of hanging there yeah. of what that was all about. Yeah. Plus the fact that Hazel, you know, dies by trying to save number five mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Exactly. During that whole mess. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that whole intro too in the very beginning of the show yeah like that it's like nazis or it's the soviets so- it's russia soviets yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In, in dallas at that time i think yeah yeah and the way they were all fighting together that a slow motion intro mm-hmm. them using their powers you see vanya actually working alongside them yeah and, and- we see how their powers have grown also how their, their their powers have kind of grown and changed we see that klaus you know, Ben is acting independently of Klaus. Yes. And Klaus has other other uh, ghosts that he's raised that are now uh, acting for him. And mm-hmm. like you said, we see Vanya, we see Luther, we see Diego dodge bullets. And I guess I guess he did something while he was in the air to curve those bullets and make them go uh, to sh- to those guys. Or he had not, I don't I couldn't catch it every time I watched it, but he definitely dodged the bullets and then did something. Uh, so their their powers have definitely grown and changed. I mean, we see Allison; she got her voice back, and mm-hmm. she says to those guys, "I blew your minds," and we see their their brains explode, blow up. You know, <laughs> we never saw that before. Uh, yeah, exactly. We, we, so it, they're definitely their powers have kind of evolved. They've they've gotten better. But the thing that that troubles me about this, and again, this is another thing I think I sent in a voicemail to somebody else, is. What happened in 10 days? Because if Diego is in a mental institution on November 15th, 1963, how does he get to November 25th, all dressed in black? And, you know, 
are we going to get that story or has, has number five changed the timeline enough at this point that we're never actually going to get the story of how these, how the six of them get together. Yeah. Got together to work for the U S government. Mm. Uh, that's yeah. a good one. Uh, or possibly that, you know, with the way number five is, maybe he was manipulating through time and changing it. And over the course, you know, like I said, there's a lot of time manipulation and mm -hmm. he's the one that is always doing it. Yeah. Very much like almost like a speedster, if you think about it, because that's how he's able to warp through everything. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. one thing that, that Hargreave himself warned him against and gave him crap for... <laughs> But yeah. it caused a lot of this too, if you think about it. Yeah, and that's what I don't. I'm, I don't know. That's, I'm, I'll be interested to see what, how much of the story we get, or if we do even get that story of how they became, you know, kind of the U.S. government's, um, you know, team. Um, so my number three is Elliot. That's the guy who witnesses all of our our team's uh, arrival. And I, you know, I actually I really love this character. I thought it was really cool. He's paranoid, uh, kind of schizophrenic. He sets up all those cameras um, on the on the roof, and they're they're so he sees, <laughs> you know, he sees. I think he only actually witnessed Klaus's arrival and Luther's arrival. But he had he must have had a picture of Diego because he says, I think this is the one that that uh, showed up, whatever. And he shows him the, the mug shot because he's I think this guy matches the description of the guy who I saw come through. Um, he it, I couldn't tell if he had a picture of Vanya. I think he might have had a picture of Vanya up on his yeah, wall. Yeah, they were kind of blurred if you think about it, too, yeah. those pictures. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but, I, you know, his whole question to, D, to Five about anal probes was, uh, <laughs> you know, why is it always anal probes? Um, I thought was funny. So I love, I hope we get this, I hope we get more of this character throughout the the season. I hope he, he sticks around and we get to see kind of his interaction and, and uh, what he's all about. Yeah, I have to agree with that. That would be my number two, though, is like Elliot helping number five mm -hmm. try to reclaim his family back and tracking his family at that point, too. Yeah. Because that's how he was able to find Luther and everything else mm -hmm. so, within this episode. Yeah, exactly. I, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. You're right, because he must he had to give him some sort of information that helped helped him find Luther as well. Uh, right. That's how he shows up there at the club. Uh, very cool. Um, so my number two is, uh, five trying to prevent Diego's escape there when he tells the guards that he's, you know, he's shaved down the bars of his cell and he's going to try to break out. Uh, and then, uh, he does break out anyway and, and he gets that help from Lila, the other patient, but I don't know what's going on with her because she seems to be really good at fighting and she's definitely protecting Diego from those commission guys, uh, that are trying to kill him because he's still drugged up and not able to really fight. Yeah, that's one wacky check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And my number one, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. That would be the different ways the six were able to adapt to the change of time. Except Diego, because he's so... He mm -hmm. doesn't like change, apparently. <laughs> since he's still in denial. that That's why he's in the insane asylum. Because he just, like, attacks everybody. Yeah. Well, he, he wants to be the hero. So. Yeah. He can't conform due to his convictions of fixing or taking care of things. His idealistic thoughts of saving JFK and maybe slitting the throat of Adolf Hitler with number five's help. <laughs> if yeah. number five would help, that is. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but exactly. the way even number five says, he goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought that was, that was great. That whole interaction between them. Um, my number one is uh, Klaus and Ben's uh, road trip. You know, they they were apparently in, in San Francisco for some reason. And I'll throw a quote in here uh, that Ben says, I need us in San Francisco. So I wonder, again, that's another one of those backstories. I, I hope that's what we're going to get throughout this season is that we're mm. going to get the different backstories of how all these characters, because they obviously, and I, you know, I think Elliot says something about a few of them came back to the alleyway to try to find, you know, people at, at where they and, were, but then yeah, they, all, they would but, just go back. Yeah. But then eventually they all gave over the years, they all gave up and, and just, it wasn't really that long of many years. Cause if you think about it, it was within a year, exactly. So. It was within a year. Each of them arrived from the other and they didn't really, so they didn't spend a lot of time trying to find, but I, you know, also you have to think about the fact that, they, they got to survive. <laughs> well, they had to survive, and they also had – they had no clue that they were all going to show up in the same place in the same decade. 
Correct. You know. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, I'll give him a little bit of grace on that of not going back to the alley a bunch of a bunch of times. They maybe did it a few times and then were just like, okay, I gotta I gotta live. You know. Or I guess we might find out. Hmm. So I put notes before quotes this time. Okay. And I think we both have a bunch of uh, notes here. Yeah. Um, some of mine we've already talked about. Um, I'll throw one of mine in here and then you can throw one of yours in. I, I love the fact that five still craves and enjoys coffee. I thought that was, I thought that was great. <laughs> He's like, is that fresh? Is this Colombian? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, you already spoke about this, but uh, you know, the way it starts off as if, you know, they all come together at the end of during this quote unquote war on the U S with the Soviets. And you know, I brought it up and you know, you, Stated about Ben's powers coming out and attacking with his tentacles mm -hmm. and s something from a different dimension. The fact that he looks like a force ghost and he's actually able to physically do stuff within mm -hmm. the world. Which they were trying to do at some points in the first season, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the only other one... Uh, well, you go on to your next Yeah, one. I'm trying to think. We've already talked about that. Um, I, I love... I laughed, and it kind of goes with my number one of Ben and Klaus's road trip. Uh, is that I love that he, he did, that Ben didn't actually help Klaus. Like in the poker game, he uh, he kind of tells him, oh, he's got nothing. And then they find out he's got, he's got a king and a seven, so he ends up having a full house. Um, so he had two, you know, he had two pair before that... Uh, that last card came out and, uh, uh, or he had three of a kind. I'm not sure which one it was. Um, we had a king and a seven. There were two kings. Yeah. So we had three of a kind. He had three kings before that second seven came out, I think is how it played out. But anyway, uh, I just thought it was funny. And then like when he's, when he wanted him to help fight and Ben just kind of appears and goes, no, I'm good. You know? And so, yeah. Klaus, so Klaus has to run out and try to find the guy's truck. And you can see him pointing the keys at the different vehicles. Like he, he thinks he can do a clicker kind of thing. And that didn't work for him. And he was just lucky to, to get the right truck the, the very first time. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. The, I'll, I'll only give two that we have, but that I have in here. Mm -hmm. Basically, Diego's concern about President Kennedy's murder that will happen within a week. Yeah. I, th this is going to be the prime function of what's going on within, like, the context of what they're going to do because something's get monumentous. Not just that. That was a monumentous moment in history, but it seems like everybody's revolved around this at certain points. Like, number five was there, as you said before. Right. Right. And then now Diego's like very concerned about this and wanting to change history and creating some sort of weird butterfly effect. And then the fact that they're they're trying to, you know, track down each other at this point, too. Yeah, because we don't know what was the catalyst that Klaus decided to go back to Dallas at that moment. We don't know if, if he saw something or heard something or, or what, you know, that, that caused him to want to leave San Francisco at that very moment to, to go back to Dallas. Um, I liked the sissy, the, the wife of the family that, that takes Vanya in, you know, she's, she's there smoking and she says, well, my husband would never let me smoke. And we kind of get this impression that she's like, she wants to leave the relationship, but at the same mm. time she doesn't want to leave the relationship. So I, I'm, I'm, I want to know more about the, the backstories of some of these side characters. I hope we, we do get some of that. Is it me or does sissy look a little bit like the handler? That was Ooh. like handling number five. Mm, you know, I didn't, I didn't notice it, but I guess it, there might be kind of a resemblance there. It's possible. I don't think the, it's the same actress. I don't think it's the um, same actress, but the fact that she looks a lot like her. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, the height, and mm -hmm. the hair length, the face a little bit, but yeah, I don't, I'm wondering if that's going to come into play hmm. because we don't know much about that handler. Yeah. Hmm. And maybe this was her beginning. Could be, could be. I like the music is still good. We're still getting, you know, good songs and good fight scenes and things. Hmm. Yeah, um, and we already discussed all the other points. You brought up all the topics. That's all I throw in there, like all the different times when everybody shows oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and we, we kind of discussed a little bit about this, but I, I want to make sure we, we hit it, is that th that fact that the commission is still active, but it's different, and that is a, a callback to the end of season one when, mm. you know, when the handler reappears and Five says, oh, you, you had enough time to heal up. And she says something about that the commission is still active, but it's different. And so mm. it's it's going to be interesting to see. Again, that's one of those things I wonder if we're going to get that story of how the commission recovered after Fives, you know, because he blew up their time trial. Their, he blew up all their briefcases. I guess there was one extra somewhere. Um, I guess it would have been in um, 
it was in the hotel room. Yeah, I don't know how she would have gotten a briefcase unless she got the same briefcase that she brought back with her from the hotel room before the apocalypse had happened. I don't. It's I'm, it's timey wimey. Uh, so <laughs> wibbly wobbly uh, timey wimey yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we've got a few quotes here. Yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start? First one would be, yeah, why don't you tell that to Luke Skywalker? And, and that was to the therapist uh, from Diego. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was <laughs> when great. When he asked him who he was. <laughs> I, I had to back that up. When he, yeah, when he was talking about dysfunctional hero complex with father issues or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was great. He, he says, you that would be a great reference if you got it, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> he didn't um, because it didn't even come out yet. <laughs> yeah. I love when, when Hazel is talking to Five about the, the commission. He says, I quit those a-holes. I don't – he didn't say a-holes though uh i don't owe them the fuzz off my peaches i thought <laughs> i was like you dude uh, yeah and then uh, the last one i would have would be klaus saying they're gone like a fart in the wind talking yeah. about his family to ben <laughs> yeah that was another one that made me laugh every time i loved when when vanya is is talking and the guy says that that she that he's put up some more missing missing person flyers and and she says maybe i'm just not the kind of girl you miss and that's where I really started thinking that this amnesia, that she's faking this amnesia. Because number one, she knows her name, obviously, because mm. she told them. Or maybe she had something on her possession that, that said her name. But she's still acting like this whole, I'm just ordinary, I'm not special kind of thing. So, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And then, and then, of course, at the very end when Luther says, I don't give a bleep about uh, the apocalypse coming. Uh, again, I Luther is a great character and I want to see, you know, how did he get this way? Because he was, we saw him kind of starting to get disillusioned at the yeah. end of season one, when he finds all those packages that he had sent from the moon that his dad, his father didn't even open. And yeah. we see him starting to get disillusioned, but now he's even further into this kind of dark hole that he's in. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets out of that. And, um, you know, what we, what we see of him throughout the season. Oh, definitely. I, I would love to. Well, there, each character is very particular, you mm -hmm. know, each has their own journey. And I think that that's Luther's journey. Yeah. Just kind of like with Vanya. Well, if she is, has amnesia or she's faking, who knows? Maybe this is her development too. Right. And then Allison dealing with her family, her love for Luther and then what she's doing now currently klaus with his relationship with ben but his attachment to this guy who's been dead from vietnam mm -hmm. which actually questions my mind about klaus and the time that this was done where uh so he was in vietnam so he it was like what in the 60s or 70s yeah i can't he... remember if they said 65 or 68 uh i can't remember from season one uh i think he said 65 is where he was in. So he's a little bit before his time in Vietnam. Yeah. Here in 1960. But the thing, the, the, the one thing that makes me think is, so the Umbrella Academy was taking place like that when they were adults and everything and Luther came back from the moon. Was that in the 70s or 88? No, no, no. no that's, that's 2019. No, that was 2019. That was present day when Luther comes, okay. when, when, when Hargreaves died. Um, because that's the whole thing that they that they reveal there at the end of season one is you find out that, that Hargreaves apparently knew this was going to happen and knew when it was going to happen. We don't know how, how he mm -hmm. knew or, or, or what, but he apparently, because he had been preparing them their whole lives for this moment. And that's why, he exactly. that's why he committed suicide to bring them all back together. And even he tells Klaus that maybe it was when Klaus manifested him, I think he says something about, you know, well, maybe it was a mistake to send Luther uh, up to the moon. He realized mm -hmm. that that kind of, that was his mistake where he, mm -hmm. he messed up. And he should have burnt those documents or something. Yeah. Or that he should have, he should have not hidden them or yeah, he should have done something different with those documents. I think that's the other thing that he regrets. But my question and my thought is, is so it's when we last saw them, it was 2019. You're saying correct. The yeah. reason why I question that is I didn't see any cell phones or anything modern. That's the, why I question it. And the fact that Klaus actually served in Vietnam, how did he get to Vietnam? No, he was in because he was on the bus. Remember, he stole the briefcase 
He stole the briefcase from Hazel oh, okay. and Cha-Cha, I lost something and, there. And he, okay, he was fiddling with it on the bus, and that's what that's what sent him back in time. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. all right. I lost something. And then after, and then in the in the flashback when we see after Dave dies, he goes to his bunk and he pulls that briefcase, briefcase out again, and somehow he manages to to dial up the correct coordinates to get him back to 2019. Uh, okay. And, and yeah. Yeah. All it's, right, it's, so I had a fart in the wind, and I couldn't yeah, remember. Yeah, it's real quick. It's, <laughs> it's real quick if you miss it because, like, then he 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 gets back to 2019, and he destroys the briefcase, and then that that starts the whole storyline of Hazel and Cha Cha trying to find the case because they realize that without that case, they can't get back. And then you mm. have that that moment when um, when number five fakes the case, he puts all those those utensils and plates and stuff into a briefcase that looks very similar to that tries to give that to Hazel and Chacha and then the handler shows up and it's yeah hmm. uh, episode <laughs> like I said eight. it's all this timey wimey wimbly yeah. wobbly thing yeah, it's, it's kind of like, <laughs> I want to say it's like episode it's either episode five or episode eight I can't remember it's right around that that part of season one uh, where it's it's real quick. Yeah, it I might kind of binge episode, watched it yeah. within a day or two. So right, so you, yeah, you can miss some little details when you when you watch it watch it fast like that. Yeah. Uh, the only news, um, you know, we didn't we didn't have any feedback. Did you check the email? No, nah, I checked all feedback. I didn't get any. I checked our email or Facebook. Nothing. Okay. The only news, really, I didn't put this in the doc, but the news, and I've already mentioned it, is that uh, from what we understand, season three has been greenlit. So mm -hmm. whenever that production is going to start, I don't know if they've written it yet or what that means for the you know the future. Yeah, and with comic news, it, there's only one. Uh, it's been out for a while, but I suggest it and recommend it. Neil Gaiman's Sandman is now available now on Audible with a lot of celebrity voice acting. A lot of major people who are casted in to do uh, the Sandman comic as like uh, I'll think about it as like a radio play, okay. you know. And I think it's really cool. Podcast recommendations. I uh, I will let everybody know. I got to set in with Ben and Kristen on the season three finale of Lost uh, from the the We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited podcast, which is a joint podcast between the Next Level this network, the Next Level Podcast Network, and Podcastica. I got to set in with them yesterday when we're recording this. It was yesterday. I think it may drop today. So uh, look for that if you're following Lost or if you just want to hear uh, more of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's uh, again I might have said it too fast that's we have to go back Lost Revisited also I, I did send voicemails and I think Mark said he sent voicemails as well to both yep. Strange Indeed and TV Podcast Industries so you'll hear us on on those those podcasts uh, Strange Indeed I think we'll be starting up next week doing mm -hmm. like us we're doing one episode a week TV Podcast Industries got some early access to the first two episodes so they've already dropped their reviews of episode one and two and mm -hmm. then next week they're starting and they're going to be combining uh some episodes so you may it may be more sporadic our voicemails to them because if we stay at one episode a week we don't want to get uh too far ahead of ourselves yeah, exactly and my recommendations will definitely be tv podcast industries and their coverage of uh, umbrella academy season two as well and strange indeed Rima and Paik, they are all doing the same as well. I just re recommend to all our listeners to listen to all of us, you know? Absolutely. I think we all will have many different views of the same show, and I think this will be, I think this will be pretty much a good, fun thing to do. I, I just, I'm probably going to be, because after I finish editing, I'm tired of listening to myself, <laughs> so I'll be listening to our friends, yeah. and then be like, hey, I want to send them feedback and hear, not exactly. hear myself, but to hear what they think of my thoughts. I'm going to try and change it up so it's a little bit different than what we have here, but that's kind of hard because we're all covering it, it the is. same show. It is, and, and like I said at the beginning, I, I you know I try to send I send different things to both those podcasts, but I think I've said them uh, the two things that I sent to those podcasts throughout this this podcast as well. So uh, you may hear something very similar uh, to on those, but I'm I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Rima and Peg talk about it, and uh, I'm interested to hear Derek and the guys as well. Yeah, well, maybe at the end of the season we can all just come together and put our heads together for like a round table and do cross we could cross the streams <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah that's it for recommendations but for podcasts but for youtube recommendations we always recommend everybody check out the grim life collective with their up all night with the grims check them out with their fun times with a live movie uh, watch party 
that they do on YouTube. Obviously, one device to watch the show and another to actually interact with Michael and Jessica. So they're doing a grindhouse thing. We're recording this August 1st, Saturday, they're doing it. But you could actually go back and watch both at the same time if you feel like it. So they're doing, you know, the Quentin Tarantino and... Uh, I forget the other director, but yeah, it was the double feature that they did for Grindhouse. So I, I would recommend that. That was, I love those two movies. So I recommend those. So you can send us feedback. Uh, we love, we want to hear from you on anything that we've been doing on any podcast player of choice. You can hear us. You can also check us out on the web at panels to pixels podcast.com. Also, we have our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The two is spelled out, T O, right there in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. You can also send us a voicemail to 845 350 2095. That's 845 350 2095. We are on YouTube, and usually that is where the podcast drops first is on youtube and we are panels to pixels podcast there give us a thumbs up subscribe to us and uh, just let us know how we're doing you can send us feedback about uh, anything from season one of the umbrella academy we'll read it if you do send us if you've watched ahead and you want to send us uh, feedback about some of the future episodes of season two we do ask that you identify that either at the beginning of your voicemail or your email so that we don't get spoiled on things that we haven't watched yet but we do want to hear what you think of the entire series, the entire season, uh, whenever you choose to send that to us. Yeah, yeah. Like like I said earlier, Steve and I will be watching one episode a week, unless one of us breaks format and we just go rogue. <laughs> and, you know, or maybe if we double up on a, a, an episode, we're going to try to work this out so that we could actually be somewhat in time with the boys when it comes out in September. But it's hard to keep it, you know, week per week because you know you have that temptation with netflix to yeah binge. <laughs> well and they've they've set that up so easy to where it's like it's almost like 15 20 seconds that it that it goes right into the next episode so if you're not paying attention all right well where, where else can listeners hear us mark besides here oh well, i can be found right here on panels to pixels as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that i love that my friends do uh there will be something new coming out at the end of august that we'll be talking about before it launches just keep listening we'll keep you updated there you go and the same thing with me uh you'll hear my voice on various other podcasts that i that i check out we do encourage you to check out any of the podcasts on the next level podcast network the uh, ben is constantly putting out uh, new content his podcasters are back to um a couple of them are regular um regularly putting out podcasts again and podcastica is regularly putting out stuff as well 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 we pretty much covered everything that's our show so thanks for everyone for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night